Once again I find myself flying over my hometown of Gosport on the south coast at the start of a 4,000 mile journey to the Caribbean. But where are we headed this time? It got its name from this tree and it's the home of famous cricketer turned golfer Sir Garfield Sobers. Any guesses? Well the answer is Barbados, a jewel amongst jewels in the sparkling Caribbean sea, 21 miles long and a smile wide as the locals say. Its gently rolling landscape and magnificent scenery make this island a real treat to explore. And once more it's my privilege along with Carol my wife to sample the delights of a tropical places holiday. All of the tropical places resorts are on the west and south coast on the Caribbean side of the island. And so with our rental car we drove straight from Grantley Adams Airport to our first destination, the Coconut Court Beach Hotel located on the south coast at Hastings. This family run self catering hotel has 120 rooms housed in a four story block on the main coastal road. And after the long journey from England, Carol was only too happy to try out our top floor balcony. And what a view! Our room is simply but tastefully furnished with twin beds. All the rooms come equipped with ceiling fans, shower, telephone, and either a kitchenette or cooking facilities. The hotel complex is neatly laid out and after a brief rest Carol and I made for the outdoor jacuzzi. The pool is plenty big enough to swim in and it is here that the hotel's five star paddy dive master holds his scuba demonstrations so that novices can see what a wonderful hobby this is. The beach is glorious and the hotel has a beach bar for drinks and ice creams. Long stretches of unoccupied sand are ideal for topping up that suntan and the hotel has a regular shoal of fish that arrive each day to be fed. A youthful entertainments department ensure that guests young in age or spirit are kept amused and the games room is well used. Although self catering, the hotel has its own restaurant with breakfast and lunch being self service. Dinner is a more formal affair and tonight is a Caribbean dinner special. Entertainment is arranged several times a week for the guests and local bands ensure a lively evening. <laughs> Weddings can be accommodated and take place in this pretty setting right by the shore. Our first island excursion was on board the Atlantis, one of only a handful of privately owned submarines operated around the world. Inside this state of the art submersible which carries up to 48 passengers, we sat looking out of one of the 26 large viewports at the reefs and wrecks 150 feet below the surface. From the depths of the ocean to the bowels of the earth, Barbados has it all. And this is the fabulous Harrison Caves, unique in the Caribbean. Although the cave's presence was known about, it wasn't until 1970 that Ole Sorensen discovered this huge section. The geological formation of the island has made this crystallized limestone cavern full of stalactites and stalagmites petrified into amazing formations. Weddings are very popular here and take place in a romantic gazebo surrounded by flowers. Crane Beach was voted one of the top 10 beaches in the world. It's also the site of the first hotel built on the island and it's here that Carol and I took afternoon tea. No, that's not the crane. It's a beautiful ruin in the grounds. This is the crane and what a fabulous view. Just down the road is Sam Lord's Castle and more stunning scenery. At the top of the island facing the Atlantic Ocean is St Lucy Parish home to the animal flower caves. In 1750 Griffith Hughes in his book The Natural History of Barbados wrote, you enter a cave big enough to hold 500 people. 
Well, they don't let that many in at once, fortunately. But some of the pools are deep enough to swim in, so bring bathers. The caves get their name from the sea anemones that live in the rock pools inside the cave. And the view from some of the openings in the cliff face are awesome. Set beside a sandy cove at Holtown, halfway up the west coast, Mango Bay is a delightfully intimate, all-inclusive resort. Only 64 rooms means that staff and guests soon get to recognize each other, and the cordial atmosphere is immediate. Landscape gardens full of flowers welcome the weary traveler in a kaleidoscope of colors. The hotel has a good sized free-form swimming pool with a children's area at one end with a bridge dividing them. And the hotel has a range of free water sports including sailing, windsurfing, water skiing, paddle boats and kayaks. A free scuba lesson is also provided in the pool. Our room faced the gardens and was spaciously furnished with a double bed, air conditioning, satellites, TV, telephone, room safe, bath and shower facilities and all the usual amenities. Imagine my surprise on our first night to discover that the hotel grounds are a main roosting site for hundreds of cattle egrets returning from all over the island as they settle down for the evening. I was in paradise and used up half a film capturing these beautiful birds as they squabbled for roosts. Evening meals are booked in advance and are immensely popular. The all-inclusive price includes house wine with meals, something I can personally recommend. Evening entertainment takes place several times a week and there is a piano lounge where tonight we are being entertained to a jazz pianist while we sample the culinary delights on offer. So far, Carol and I have been under the ocean, under the earth, and now it's time to sail with the pirates on the ocean blue. The Jolly Roger is a must-fun day out for all ages on board one of their replica ships as they sail up the west coast. Under pirate rules, a wench who has done wrong, and what wench hasn't, has to be sacrificed and thrown overboard. Then it's a free-for-all on the swinging ropes to see who can make the most elegant entry into the water. Wasn't that Leonardo DiCaprio? Ample portions of meat and vegetables make for a happy and contented crew. On the journey home it's non-stop dancing all round the decks of the ship as we head for port. For a more leisurely journey following the same route, I can thoroughly recommend the heat wave experience. From the heart of Bridgetown, Barbados's capital, on most days of the week you can book a trip along the coast, culminating in a swim with the turtles. If you enjoy sailing rather than motoring, then John and his crew will take great delight in showing off their 50-foot catamaran to its best advantage as we tack towards the feeding grounds. We make a short stop at Alain's Bay to pick up some fish to tempt the turtles. Max Bygraves lives here, you know. I have for many years now enjoyed scuba diving, and the thrill of being so close to these great creatures is something everybody should have the opportunity to experience. A wash down in fresh water puts an edge on our appetite and lunch is on its way, prepared by our crew on an outdoor barbecue. The fare is perfect to eat on the wide deck 
washed down with complimentary drinks, topped up as soon as our glass is empty. We make another stop at a wreck located in shallow water and teeming with fish shoaling in and around this artificial reef. You guys want some? The first thing you realize when you reach the Almond Beach Village near Spatestown, our most northerly resort destination, is its sheer size. Set in 32 acres of what was a sugar plantation, the front is dominated by a nine-hole par three golf course, part of many complimentary sports the resort has to offer. The main reception area is vast and has some delightful shaded walkways, one side leading to the main restaurants and the other to guest services and a comprehensive range of on-site shops. We are staying in a garden view room on the ground floor and our accommodation is well decorated with a king-size bed and it has all the usual amenities that you would expect in such a well-run resort. There are 330 rooms divided into villages and categorized by view with standard deluxe pool view, garden view and deluxe ocean view to choose from. Of course I start my stay here by seeking out the wildlife and this banana quit is busy nest building. This large estate has been thoughtfully laid out with trees and shrubs and a profusion of blossoms can be seen while walking through the villages. This sugar mill is all that's left from the original plantation and is often used for wedding ceremonies. There are no less than 10 swimming pools scattered throughout the property so you could almost pick a new one every day of your holiday and they're extremely well laid out. Having so many pools to choose from means that you are bound to find one suitable to soak up the sun's rays in peaceful tranquility. Ideal for young lovers of any age. Scuba training is also available from the on-site dive shop. And of course a pool wouldn't be a pool without a pool bar. Ideal for those must-have thirst quenchers. This resort is also ideal for families with children and two of the pools are just for them, the children that is. A large children's centre has plenty of daily activities both indoors and out and there are play areas for toddlers. The beach is long and sandy with plenty of room to spread out and there is a good range of complimentary water sports. A regular bus shuttle ferries guests to the Almond Beach Club, a smaller property down the coast which is for adults only, and guests regularly swap between the two. There are 161 rooms here and facilities are much the same as at the village, but for singles and couples only. Back at Elman Village and it's time for breakfast, which is buffet style at two different restaurants, with a comprehensive assortment of fresh fruits and cooked offerings. Evening diners are spoilt for choice, but it's nice to start off the evening at Tommy's Rum Shop before your meal. Sensible people book early to dine at this exquisite Italian restaurant, which is not only tastefully decorated, but serves great dishes. Enid's restaurant is a must if you want to try great Caribbean food with a great Caribbean atmosphere. Two of our guests are getting married today and they have plumped for the beachside gazebo to tie the knot. All of the hotels featured by Tropical Places on this video are licensed for wedding ceremonies and Tropical Places will handle most of the arrangements on your behalf.
Bridgetown, the island capital, is a mixture of old and new, and the two mingle quite well. It's interesting to note that the statue of Nelson, which stands in Trafalgar Square, predates ours in London by about 30 years, and he has looked out over the Parliament buildings for 187 years. It's a lively, bustling town and the streets are full of shoppers and street vendors selling their wares. It seems that most of the islanders and tourists alike have decided to go shopping at the same time. And who needs fancy lollies when you can buy an ice cone? Founded in 1863 by Moses Wood, a Bajan who had served in the British Navy, the landship were formed to recreate the camaraderie and discipline he had found in the forces, but expressed in a way only possible in the Caribbean. Women were allowed to join after the First World War, and the uniforms are a mixture of naval and nursing outfits. At the beginning of the video, I started to tell you how the island got its name. Well, it seems that Portuguese sailors sighting the island for the first time looked at the fig trees which then fringed the whole shoreline and thought they looked like old men with long beards, Los Barbados meaning the bearded one. And what better place to find a good example than at the wildlife sanctuary? Many endangered local species as well as the largest collection of tortoises in the Caribbean and all roaming free make this well worth a visit. It also houses a grand selection of orchids. Long ago, the Arawak Indians from South America made these waters their home, and since then a wave of people from many lands have settled here, among them Sir Edward Cunard of the famous shipping line. And here he built his great house, which now houses Glitter Bay's reception. In the beautiful grounds of his estate have been built a selection of Spanish-style units, all of which face the gardens. Tastefully blended with the surrounding wildlife, it's an idyllic setting. Stylish furnishings of rattan, tropical fabrics and island wood blend with terracotta tiles in these comfortable guest rooms. The pool is large and secluded and sits alongside the restaurant. The water sport and dive center cater for all desires and offer a wide range of water sports. Next door on the 30 acre estate is the Royal Pavilion, which like Glitter Bay is a five star resort and looked it. A tasteful arcade of shops offer a wide selection of designer labels to choose from in the boutiques. The gardens are a botanist's delight and tours are arranged to see the gardens. The beach is pristine with a gently rounding bay and our room is ground floor to your right. There are 72 rooms just like this and all facing the ocean. They're immaculately furnished in pleasing pastel colors 
and reflect the price. We are staying here on a room-only basis, but by the pool there is a restaurant, should you require one, which serves breakfast, lunch and cocktails. But the real splendour of this place is the open-air dining room, which looks straight out to sea. Guests are entitled to afternoon tea, and I can thoroughly recommend it. Dinner transforms into a magical affair, with simply laid tables and candlelight providing the atmosphere. This has been such an action-packed two weeks that I couldn't fit it all on the video. So as Carol and I enjoy our last sunset, I'll leave you with a short taster of the island that is Barbados. way to finish our holiday. 